It's written by a celebrity. It's funny. It has a shocking, catchy title. What more could you ask? <laughs> well, it would be enough, but this book is so, so much more. It is well written and it leads you to personal revelations step by step. It is a celebrity memoir, but it's paradoxically very relatable. Who doesn't have parents who screw them up in some way? Parents are just people, they aren't perfect. Of course, we all have complicated relationships with them. So this book is just a perfect reminder of that. Hi, I'm Maria from Read Fine Books and today we are talking about uh, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. So why do we read or should read this book? First, the genius title, obviously. Second, the celebrity factor. I was reeled in even though I've never ever watched Nickelodeon. But the reason number three why you really should read this book is the exquisite and funny writing. You might come for the title or the celebrity factor, but you will stay as I did because the writing is so funny. It's gripping and entertaining and inspiring. I absolutely loved it. Also, reason number four is the blameless approach. Uh, Janet McCurdy writes this book without blaming anyone for her troubles. She just states feelings around events that affected her a lot. Events surrounding her mother, the creator of the show on Nickelodeon, and other people that influenced her life. Yes, they are all there, but she doesn't blame them for whatever happened. Her approach is so therapeutic and refreshing, I was amazed by it. The reason number five you should read this book is, of course, relatability. Everyone has imperfect parents. They are normal people, they make mistakes. Um, of course, not everyone has uh, such controlling parents as Jeanette McCurdy did. Not everyone has uh, mani manipulative parents. Not everyone has the same experience in the same degree she did. However, all experiences are a bit complicated with parents and that is natural. From this comes another reason why you will like this book. The gratefulness reinforcement factor. Because you read about experiences that are worse than yours. And it is unavoidable. You will like your life more because of it. You will understand your experiences better because of it. So yes, you may have had your uh, own share of very, very bad experiences, but at least in some respects you will see your life is better than hers and of course vice versa. The most important reason to read this book is uh, of course the insight into another reality. The clash between uh, her public image and her reality for such a long time is fascinating. Her life story is amazing and you should definitely, definitely read this book. So what is I'm Glad My Mom Died actually about? Janet McCurdy was a child actress. This is her memoir, the story of a young girl in a constant attempt to please her mother Deborah. It is that simple. Janet was six years old when her story starts, when uh, her mother signed her up for acting classes and acting jobs. At this young age, Janet is smart, very observant, funny, but she can never, never be what her mother needs. She can never be enough for her mother. Her reflections are sharp and naive. Her wishes always come on second place. She is forever unable to tell her mother what she really thinks 
because her mother can't handle it and to have a six-year-old being responsible for the emotional stability of their mother that is devastating her father is absent constantly overworking her three brothers are in the house but they are in their own world with no cares and no problems because of her relationship with her mother and the constant need to please her she's unable actually to grow up uh, to form her own personality to to become independent and it is heartbreaking janet's story goes through adolescence in the same way her mother actually is unwilling to let her grow up she even showers her up to the age of 18 and in these showers she submits her to physical exams she does those herself and this kind of behavior is such an invasion of privacy and intimacy i can't even imagine when janet finally gets her period she is overwhelmed by the idea that she's growing up and that her mother won't love her anymore because her mother always wanted her to be little and to need her so going along with her mother's advice she decides to eat less and less this way she thinks she'll stop developing uh, she also becomes anorexic later develops bulimia and OCD from this emotional turmoil. This is continued abuse in the worst form possible. Her mother had been diagnosed with cancer when she was two. She had overcome it, but when Janet is around the age of 18, Deborah's cancer comes back. And this gives Janet mixed feelings because for the first time she is able to go solo on a tour Yet her mother is suffering and of course she doesn't want to suffer even though this gives her a bit of independence. However, this is short-lived because when she uh, is able to get her first apartment, her mother practically moves in the first night. Also, Janet's first boyfriend is a 30-something guy and she hides him away from her mother for almost a year lying about it and for a good reason because when she actually discovers it uh, her mother reacts in a very disproportionate way she starts insulting her daughter she threatens her and uh, says she'll disown her uh, while at the same time asking her for money. She also talks about her own funeral a, a lot, makes her daughter promise to sing the wind beneath my wings at her funeral. She always has a way to make her feel very bad about whatever she does. This is just a lot. And this is just the first part of the book. The second part is after her mother dies. This part is a bit more serious in a different note of writing. It involves a lot of therapy. It involves a lot of processing death, grief, uh, a lot of uh, bad decisions as well. And her mother's surprises don't stop. She actually finds out about lies her mother said after she had died and these lies have the nature of changing her entire life so even though everything here remains helpful the message remains positive this is such an extraordinary life i started the book because of the title i remained because of the writing and the events in her life i just couldn't stop admiring her point of view and the way she faces events in her life. I love that it is all like a therapy session, acknowledging facts, accepting facts and uh, uh, dealing with 
them along with um, stating emotional reactions at the time I actually think her life could be turned into a movie because her experience is so unique and yet such so relatable at the same time and in the end her processing of everything was unhealthy for such a long time it involved her taking some very bad decisions but, but the candor with which she uh, talks about everything it made me genuinely happy that everything turned out okay in the end for her it was such an emotional read as well for the most part of it i only wanted to hug this little girl and tell her it's all okay and that that emotional response from my part is actually something i loved in this book as well this ability to generate something like this for me um, i was enthralled with it her writing simply touched my soul and i can't recommend it enough this is Maria from Read Fine Books. Thank you so much for watching.